On today's guide, just because you're learning doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself. Making learning fun for children. We give you some really useful pointers on how to keep your young ones interested. All about word endings. Knowing a few word endings can help you improve your reading and writing skills. And we'll be looking at how one man in Limerick kept himself motivated on his journey towards his goals. How we learn as an adult can be very different from how we learn as a child. And playing with children can help us understand more about how we learn. Children have less fear, their minds are much more open and they're incredibly curious about new things. In an average day, an average four-year-old will ask over 400 questions. Think how often we hear that one little question in particular, why, why, why? As we grow up, though, we learn not to ask so many questions. We begin to wonder if we're being annoying or if we ask too many questions, will we look stupid? Yet some of the greatest thinkers say that we need to continue to ask questions. As Albert Einstein once said, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. Think about how children learn to speak. Do they learn parts of the words or the whole thing? Most adults know the words already, but when they learn to read, they use the words as if they're building blocks. Some of the most important building blocks are word endings. There are lots of words in English, and you can change words by adding different endings to them. One word ending we use all the time is ing. Like in the word parking, on this no parking sign. Or the words walking and talking, on this holiday brochure. In these words, the string of letters I-N-G has been added to the action words park, walk and talk. With many words, adding I-N-G is very straightforward. You just add the I-N-G and you don't have to make any other changes to the word. Add I-N-G to park and you get parking. Add ing to cook and you get cooking. Look becomes looking. Build building. Sing singing and speak speaking. You'll find examples of words ending in ing all over the place, like crossing, gardening, fishing. And on this sign we find the word warning. Something different happens with other action words, and we'll look at that later in the programme. There are also other word endings, such as full, for example, Help becomes helpful and care becomes careful. If you'd like to find out more about word endings, there's a free workbook that goes with the series to help you along the way. To get your free pack, you can free phone the number on your screen, 1800 20 20 65. That's 1800 20 20 65. Or you can visit our website. Having fun with your children doesn't need to cost a fortune, and learning is much more effective when it's fun. There are lots of ways that adults can help children to learn. One of these is to take them to visit somewhere interesting and fun and then look for learning opportunities. Here's a family who've done just that. Children learn a lot in school, but when they're back home, they just want to enjoy themselves. So how can we continue their learning experience while making sure they also have fun? Visits to zoos, museums and aquariums are a good place to start. As well as being a fun day out, they can also be very educational. Hello there. Hi, could you tell me the price of family ticket, please? No problem. That will be 31 euro, please. And what price would it be individually for? So one adult and then four children would be 37.55. I'll take a family ticket, please. Now that actually includes a souvenir guidebook, all right? And we also have these colour-coded questions for around the centre. I think the children will enjoy doing them. Yeah. All right, thank you. So it's 31 euro there, please. 
I, I take another one of these That's gloves no as well, please. Just the next to pour your roll there, please. That's two. Three. That's a two. Very good. Now, give that in there now. Yeah, thank you. This is the entrance here, girls, and we're going to go to there, the octopus, and cockle shell cove, and work our way around to the rivers of the world. There's a question here now for our cards. How many species of fish are there in the world? 21,000, 1 million, 10, or over 100,000. And we have to look for the answer nearby. Did we scratch the right one? Yes. Oh, very good. Reading and listening aren't the only ways in which children learn. The more senses they use, the more likely they are to remember things. Now, do you guys know how many legs crabs have? Ten. Yep. Ten. Ten. Very good, yep. Yeah, exactly. Because when these guys are only babies, they actually don't have any claws here. They just have another pair of legs. They grow their claws later on. Do you remember the kind of the creature that Nemo and Marlon lived inside? Had lots yeah. of tentacles? Well, this is one of these guys just here. Right. Anemones. Anemones, exactly. Yep. Sea anemones. Now, what the clownfish do is they live inside these around the tentacles, not on these ones, and bigger anemones, okay? It's okay, they don't sting, yeah, okay? They do thing. sting, but actually they're so small that we can't even feel them stinging. Oh, really? See? Oh. You feel it. No, I heard it. <laughs> okay? This guy is a giant spiny starfish. But all common starfish have five legs. Now, if you look at this guy here, he only has three. If they feel threatened in any way, they can actually attach their oh, own legs, take their own legs yeah. off and leave them there. So say a big fish might want to eat a starfish, the starfish will take one of his legs off, leave it there and escape it as there's four left. In about two to three weeks, he'll grow his leg back. So starfish are famous for being able to regenerate any part of the body whatsoever, whatever it is, they can grow it back. Games are a great way to make a day trip more enjoyable. They can help children become more observant, sharpen their minds and help them figure out things by asking useful questions. See, there's four different types of fish in this tank, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the first one is called a smooth hound, the second is a starry, starry. smooth hound. <laughs> we have a nurse hound and we have a ballon rat. So can we see, can we see any starry smooth hounds in there? Starry. They're like the ones that look like a Mommy. shark but they've got spots, like stars on them. Mommy. There he is over there, look. Look, he's see over him? there at the ship. There That's the, the starry smooth hound. Oh, look at him, isn't he very big? And the experience doesn't have to end after you've left. By discussing what you saw and encouraging the children to draw pictures, write a story, or even look up more information online, you can help them remember what they've learned on a great day out. Visiting an aquarium does cost money, but there are lots of other options. Going to the beach, going to the park, a nature walk, drawing pictures, all of these cost nothing. Well, joining me now in studio are some people who can suggest some more activities for you to do along with your children. Babs Johnson, and we're also joined by Margaret Keating, who's a family literacy coordinator. Margaret, you're very welcome as well. Babs, you've brought your grandchildren along with you today, um, two lovely girls, Cara and Hannah, down there. Do you find that the way you interact with them differs from the way that you were with your own grandparents? Yes, I find uh, I wouldn't be as strict with children. It's more kind of affectionate these days, is it? It is, yes. In, in what way? Well, we play together and uh, they do a lot of activities in the house as well and I get involved with them. Mm. Whereas you with your own grandparents? <laughs> we just didn't do that. Were there more rules? Is that it? Yeah, or? I think children had to be quiet. Margaret, I suppose one very useful aid for parents, grown-ups, learning with children is a story in a sack and Hannah and Tara have one down here. What's yeah. the idea? Well, the idea, and uh, maybe the girls would like to take out the things, the idea of it is it's a, it's a storybook with props and it's really telling stories using the prop. So um, this is a story called The Rainbow Snake and then we have another no a non-fiction book as well which that sort of extends the interest and it shows the children and, and the parents that, there's, that it's, it's not just stories, that books are about information. Okay, so it's so a whole load of things in, in here the around the story, the story of the snake that's to right. encourage yeah, them to, to read. read. Yeah. Uh, so what have we got? So we have a storybook, we have a cloud with a snake <laughs> and, and we also have um, the non-fiction book, 
Do you want to look in the bag and see what else is in there? And the bag itself is lovely, and the actually. Bag, yes, it's got clouds as well. And this is a little scenery backdrop that goes with the story. It's sort of some of the pictures that are in the story. Brilliant. Yeah. So they can act so out they can, yeah, the story. Yeah, do the words and stuff like that. And then it's, it's, it's also got some cards and... Lots um, of things in lots, here. Yes, and the cards then can be used for um, matching or sorting or playing a game, snap or memory or something like that. And it's, it also encourages sort of the intergenerational idea of family learning where like the parent can play the game with the children. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you can pick a story and then you can either go around the house and find lots of things, things that relate to it yeah. or even yeah. make them. You could make these cards, That's could you? Right. You could. There are sometimes people might have a, you know, use a picture uh, and cut it up into a jigsaw. That would be another example of a game, you know. Great. And then they can act out little scenes. scenes. Yes. I suppose you could even uh, sing songs about snakes or tape them doing yeah, that and put could. that in as yeah, well. Could yeah. You? Well, I have. There is a tape in the sack as well, um, which is just the story being read. But you could do any other things, or if you had rhymes, or or um, it, it, there's also a little suggestion list in a in a sack um, of other things that people could do like um, take the girls to the snake house in the zoo, which they tell me, they tell sure me they've, they've, already, <laughs> they've already been there. Or making um, uh, snakes with Play-Doh or plasticine or a sock puppet, you Very know, good. snakes at puppets. So you're so using your imagination yeah, a lot yeah, in, yeah. in doing it. Yes, and then sometimes parents actually do the story sex, make a story sex in a group, and then in that way then they're, they all make a sack for their own grandchild or child and then they help each other then, you know, so usually in ten houses you'd find a lot of the props that would go in the different sides. I suppose you could swap them then as well. Yeah, could you, between the, yes, houses? very often they're done in a kind of a library setting, say in a preschool or something. Babs, with all of these uh, toys and I suppose videos and fun and places like an aquarium to take children, um, do you think kids are, more, are better off now than they were when you were growing up? In terms of activities and things and to activities, do? Activities, yes. But um, I think time is an important thing. Ah. Yeah. In other words, that you find that there's less time to give them now? Yeah. Well, I find up where we live, there's an area, it's just... Um, and I, the girls come up with me up onto the hill and they have great time. It's just... Just doing nothing is yeah. important as well.